Hey, today I'm going to make a video with my Remington 870 pump shotgun. I bought this in about 2003 and then a year, within the first year that I bought it I accessorized it a bit because at the time you couldn't buy these directly from Remington in this configuration. Nowadays if you go into a gun shop you see a whole line of pump shotguns like this, semi-automatic shotguns like this. They're really popular for different competitions and people like to have them because they're tactical or more combat ready I guess I mean I don't I don't know I styled this after uh, early 2000s SWAT shotgun which interestingly enough is only slightly different today so it's, it's a good design it holds up I've never had any problems with it anyway I put a speed feed stock on it. I decided to go with one that you can't put rounds in just because I've heard the springs fatigue in those and I thought eh, forego that if I want to have extra rounds on the stock I'll just get an elastic sleeve that I can put six rounds in or four rounds or what have you. Uh, since I'm back on the stock I'll show you the sling swivel. This is a fancy sling swivel there you go. Ooh. I bought a package of these I think at Gander Mountain on clearance. I think five dollars for like a package of five or something silly. It was cheap. But it's functional and that's what matters. That's what matters in that sort of thing. Up here I have a short factory Remington forend that I was given. The original one that was on here had a little bit of extra that came back covered this area I think it was to make it so you don't get your fingers pinched in here which really isn't a problem if you keep your hand up on the pump I guess if it slid back but that's not I mean I, I, like what this is like covered in water maybe and you're wearing slippery gloves I mean maybe anyway uh, Wilson Combat two round extension taking it from four to six rounds a Remington park rise 18 inch barrel it's the it's, it's a cylinder bore it can take two and three quarters of three inch shells and it's a, like their SWAT or riot gun shotgun barrel that at least it was a couple years ago or, which which that is the newest part on here I think I went through, I had one other barrel before this that was uh, originally a factory, uh, longer probably like a 20 inch barrel that had been cut down by a gunsmith like 18 and a half inches but it was only a 2 and 3 quarter bore so I lost part of the capability of the shotgun that I bought which I'm not totally sure, I can't remember if it was the Deer Magnum Synthetic or if it's the Magnum Express. It was a long time ago when I bought this. But we'll all get to see when I take the side saddle off. Which brings me to the side saddle. Which is a Tackstar side saddle. It's been a pretty good side saddle for me. Um, I'm not a fan of the brand. I didn't buy a Tackstar magazine extension for a reason. And I have had these screws, even though I'd Loctited them in, they did work their way out. Um, through firing so that is a little disheartening but anyway today I'm going to be changing out the safety for a more reliable type of safety I mean it's still just the same plunger cross bolt safety but it's just a, a more reliable design so let's get started on that start out by popping off this uh, sling swivel in the back this is really complicated or fancy sling swivel. Ooh, fancy. And then I'm going to take out, take off the magazine extension, which you need to be careful of. And this is a lot harder to do on camera than when you're not trying to do it on camera. So hopefully I can keep the spring from shooting out. Very nice. I have shot that thing off of there. And I'll be honest, I, I shot it off of there without it being on camera once or twice as well. Next I'm going to Pull the barrel off, which comes off pretty easily if you move the pump forward and comes off a lot better. Set that off to the side. 
Now I'm going to reach down inside the receiver and push the lifting gate up. And you have two little bars on the side here, which I'm used to doing this standing it up. So it's a little different for me to do it like this. And you want to push those bars in. Make sure they're both in. And then flip the shotgun over. And this is important. If you don't flip it over before you do this, you'll drop the bolt right onto the table. And it makes a hell of a noise. And you don't really want to do that. And the bolt, if you've never seen uh, pump action shotguns, action rails, or at least in 870s like this, but they're generally something similar. Your bolt sits on the top of the action rails like that. Push it back. The locking lug drops down. Push it forward. And when the bolt goes up into battery, this locking lug right here, lifts up and goes into the top of the receiver, which is kind of hard for me to show you. I'll probably try here in a minute, but anyway, that's how that works. And it just sits on top of this other block, which interacts with this underside of this. Push that back in there. See if I can get some better light on it. I mean, this isn't exactly a technical breakdown of how a Remington 70 pump shotgun works, but Generally, that's it. I'm not going to disassemble this whole thing. There's no need to. Um, one of the nice things about a shotgun is as long as you keep it clean, check to make sure no parts are overly fatigued or anything, it'll hold up for a long time. Next, I'm going to remove the side saddle, which normally this would have two pins in it. They're just set in there and I mean they kind of lock but you can push them in and out but when I put the side saddle on it came with these allen heads allen heads that you can't see and I'll, I'll try to kind of show you the locking recesses here or the locking recess in the top Of the, of the barrel here in a minute. I guess I shouldn't have set the receiver. Kind of not exactly right. But. Oh my god. There we go. It's out. I just need to push it out from the other side. The screws, they get stuck for some reason right there before the end. And I'm not sure what they get stuck on. Frustrating. Frustrating is using this. I should have brought a ratcheting screwdriver down. Okay, that's out. Okay, I thought it was out. There we go. And that one's out. And don't want to lose my little washers. They're easy to lose. Okay, here's the big reveal. It is. Oh, turn that over for you. Uh. 870 Express Magnum. That is what it is. So there we go. Mystery solved. Then once you push those two pins out or screws out, whichever you may have, you just push this forward. It just comes right out. It's pretty simple. To remove the safety, which is also really simple, you've got a pin right here. This little pin right there. And a hole, ooh, hole right here. That hole leads to a spring that leads to the safety. And that's the other side of that pin right there. So I'm going to take a punch, appropriately sized punch, and push this out while keeping my finger over the top of the hole. I'm going to let the pin just fall on the table in a second. There we go. I'll pick that up. Oh, I'll pick that up in a second. I'm going to slowly pull that out. And hopefully I've done this without shooting the spring, which I have, even though I am going to replace that spring. I've replaced my spring port. And then, simply, as simple as that, 
you can just push the uh, safety out, or <laughs> yeah, safety out. Okay, should be able to. There we go. Should be a little finicky. Need to take that out too. Okay. Now that is out. So I'm going to get my new safety that you can't see because I was doing that zoomed in, which hopefully saw what I was doing there, the pin and such. Um, my new safety, new ball detent, and a spring. Spring. And these are from Brownells. Brownells. Good place to get gun parts. And for some reason when I come down here and do videos, I half the time don't bring my knife. And I guess since I've only done three videos down here, that would be uh, one and a half times. One and a half times. Spring. I'm going to set that down here. It looks really tiny on that spring. It's a little ball detent. And my new safety. New safety. First things first, push the new safety in. Oh, well, you know what? I'm going to zoom in on that. Zooming in. Safety hole. Safety hole. Push. <laughs> safety in. Safety's on. Going to drop the ball. Little ball detent. Right in the hole. Well, okay. Push it in the hole. Like so, take my spring, put it in the hole, there we go, grab another different appropriately sized punch, not that one, whoa, um, oh here it is, underneath some stuff, now I'm going to take this punch, which is the same size as the spring, and I'm going to compress the spring. Now hopefully, although, again, it would be funny, hopefully I won't accidentally let go of the punch and shoot it up into the camera, or maybe at this point you're hoping I will. Either way, you know, I don't blame you. It might be funny. What I need to do is compress that spring, and then if you look, oh, I'm going to take pressure off this for a second because I should have shot it to you a second ago. If you look at this pin, which you can't really see yet, focus. Focus, focus on this. There we go. It's tapered, it's pointed at the end. Now what I'm going to do with this punch, punch, is compress the spring, and then I'm going to push this pin in there. And with the spring compressed, as I push this forward, I can let pressure off of the punch, and it will capture the spring and can continue to push it over the top of the spring. So. Here goes, let's see if I can do this without shooting a spring. And without doing anything else stupid. Zoom back out. See, I don't miss it if I do. Okay, compressed. Now, just gonna slowly let the punch out. Hopefully I'm below the pin. Oh, not sure. Oh. Nope. And push it down a little more. Don't worry. It, it, it'll go in there. Oh, that's scary because it's in there, but it's not all the way down. Maybe scary is not the right word for it. it sounds a little lame. <laughs> Worrisome. Okay, there we go. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what this looks like in here. Maybe. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, there you go. 
See if I can get another light on that so you can actually see down in there and see what that looks like. See? Just the tapered portion of that pin allows you to just push it over the top of the spring, which tensions the spring. It's actually kind of a neat design, even though it is kind of a pain. But you have to get springs in things um, and, and under tension. So push that the rest of the way through with a punch. Functional safety on off works. Okay, now to put it back together, which is pretty easy. Oh, I, I cocked the hammer back just because I, I think that makes assembly easier. Okay, and I'm going to start pretty much just in reverse. Oh, yeah, I'm going to show you. Show you, show you the camera. Okay, see this is kind of, sort of, how your bolt sits in your barrel. And when it's all the way up in battery, the locking load, I think I had it a little off. Either way, I mean, there you go. There you go. This locking lug right here engages, I can't really see it, but it engages with this uh, cutout right here in the top of the barrel, this shoulder, which you can probably see it right there. But that is where it engages. Oh, flashlight and the camera shot. Anyway, so that locks in there. It's pretty strong, obviously. But if you didn't know, now you know. So, if you didn't know, now you know. Okay. Just slide the trigger assembly back into the receiver. It's pretty simple. Doesn't need to go quite that far in. Now, it's kind of a pain with these screws because you have to push them through. And with the side saddle, I mean, it's uh, something that you just yet have, have to live with, obviously, if you're going to have a side saddle. It's got to be attached somehow, and obviously you're going to probably use screws. You know, you're not going to use rivets. I mean, I guess you could use rivets, but that seems a little old-timey. I mean, they had to be big rivets. And that would require even more work than this to, to get them to, to go in, which isn't really that bad. I'm going to. Just, I, I, I'm giving it just a friendly tap with a ball peen hammer lightly. I mean, I, I wouldn't, if there were any sort of tension against it, I wouldn't. Uh, do that. I mean, if I hit it and it was solid, there's obviously a problem, but it's just not sliding through the trigger assembly. It's fine. Anyway, this, this is where the hard part comes in because you have to align this. And it's not that hard. I mean, I shouldn't say hard part. It's all pretty simple. But align this and then screw it on and you can barely see what I'm doing. Align this with the two screws I just put in. You have to align it with the two screw holes in this, which is kind of a pain in the butt. But, 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 it's just, it's just more of a pain or worrisome because it's back in place aluminum. The screws are steel. If you know anything about screwing aluminum into steel, it can easily become cross-threaded and at which point it does that it's a pain in the butt. And it wouldn't be so bad except this other screw is kind of blind. It's kind of blind. I mean all screws are blind. They're inanimate. They can't see a damn thing. If they could they wouldn't probably become cross-threaded. Like oh shit that's not the way I'm supposed to go. Sorry, sorry. Uh, as I try to flip my other Allen wrench out of here. And I might put some Loctite on these. 
Um, I may, I, I probably will, not right now, just because I don't have the kind of Loctite I want to put on it at the moment. I'll just keep an eye on it, make sure they don't get loose. Also, don't over tighten those, because over tightening those will actually squeeze your receiver, squeeze your receiver uh, together, and you'll notice it because your pump action bars will bind, and you don't want that. No one wants binding bars. That sounds kind of like a BDMS uh, hangout, binding bars. A any anyway, I guess that wasn't so uh, G rated. But anyway, you put the bolt back onto the action bars of the pump. Just has two notches, one on each side, and then a, well, a notch there, and an open area back there. Corresponds to these. Mamma Jammas right here. Mamma Jammas, that's from that awful Chevy commercial, which I don't mind those commercials, but I cannot stand that guy that says Mamma Jammas. Okay, now if I can set this on here. Okay. And then, just slide that on to the magazine tube. And the same bars that we had to push earlier, we have to push again in order to allow the action bars to slide into the receiver. This is way easier when I'm not doing it on camera. There we go. That's in there. Uh, lock the bolt back. Push the pump back. Take your barrel. Make sure it's in there correctly. Slide it into the receiver. Lining up the barrel or the band with the magazine tube. Slide it in. Make sure it's in there correctly, which it is. You'll know because it slides all the way in. And, I mean, that's, that's seated. You'll know that it's seated. If it's not seated, you'll be able to see that there's a gap. It won't fit properly, and you won't be able to close the bolt properly. Because, <laughs> you won't be able to close the bolt properly. Because, as you saw earlier, the locking lug for the bolt is in the top of the barrel. So... Now, for the magazine tube, if I can do this without dropping it off the edge of the table. Oh, good God. Good God, man. Zoom out just a tad bit. Now, this is a lot more complicated to do on camera because... Normally I would stand the shotgun on its butt, on its butt, and uh, do it that way, which makes it a lot easier. You can't really see what I'm doing, because I have to keep my hand over this magazine spring, or it'll go shooting out like a can of funny pretzel worms. Which, I mean, isn't it weird how those pretzel worm things seem freaking hilarious when you're a kid? But the joke got so tired so quickly, it's like, really? I don't I don't care about these stupid cans. Yeah, it's a can of nuts with a springy worm in it. That's hilarious, dude. Yeah, yeah. Don't you shock me at the joy buzzer. Anyway, that's back on there. I'm fighting with it just a just a little bit. And now finally, most important portion. Gotta get this on here. This is important. Without this, you have no sling. And the sling is very important. So let's put our swivel back on there, push it through, and it's locked. It's ready to go. Functional. Our safety's on. No, no trigger, safety's on, no trigger, safety's off, trigger, pumps back, boop, pumps back, pumps forward, safety on, no trigger, safety off, trigger, and there we go. And that's how you change out a safety on a Remington 870 shotgun. Uh, pretty, 
much the same for any newer one I would imagine. It's a design that hasn't changed a whole lot in very long. I don't know about Remingtons nowadays. I've heard a lot of not so good things about them. But the shotgun has never let me down. It has always performed well. And I'm really happy with its functionality. I've used it for shooting clay pigeons. I've used it for shooting slugs. I've used it for all kinds of different stuff. And it's functioned in every role that I could want it to. And a shotgun is really a gun everyone should have. I, I can't say that about a handgun or any rifle, but every person should have a shotgun. Uh, at least one in the household because the range of things that a shotgun can do with just a couple different rounds, it makes it worthwhile for everyone to have one. Because you never know, what if there's an extended blackout? I mean, I'm not saying I think this could happen, but what if it did? And what if you had to, you know, hunt game? And especially if you've never hunted anything before, a shotgun with birdshot, or a little heavier than birdshot, you could kill a rabbit, and then, since you've probably never seen how to skin a rabbit, I guess figure it out. But, at least they give you a chance. A lot better than if you're like throwing pointy sticks at rabbits, because those little, those little monkeys are fast. I guess they're rabbits, not monkeys. Anyway, yet I digress. Hopefully the camera work wasn't too terrible on that. As I tried to watch my monitor. Um, I'll see when I uh, post the video. So thanks. Um, hope you check out some more videos by me and anybody else. There are a lot of good guys out there.